All right, this is a Fox News alert this morning. An alleged al-Qaeda member and a U.S. citizen. The FBI says Sharif Mobley was picked up in Yemen. He was born in New Jersey. Uh, and that is raising some eyebrows. Reports that he worked at several U.S. nuclear power plants. So yeah, what um, is up with that? And these terror analysts will tell you time and again, Western-born jihadist converts represent a troubling new wave, a troubling new breed of terrorists. Uh, Frank Salufo is a former special assistant to the president uh, for Homeland Security. And Frank, good morning to you. I, 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 Thanks, I think Phil. Specifically on, on, on the latest suspect who was picked up in Yemen, guy spent some time in Philadelphia, also in New Jersey, uh, worked at these nuclear power plants, not quite sure exactly what his relationship was or whether they had any sort of secret knowledge or technology know-how. But I think the mm -hmm. fundamental question is this. He went to Yemen two years ago. So we need to figure out what was he doing there over the past two years. Absolutely, Bill. And I think the nuclear question, though, one of the other questions we need to ask is historically we protected secrets from spies who are interested in weapons design and research and development. But this individual could have had access to information of our power plants, of our nuclear plants. So you've got a critical infrastructure question that hasn't normally been on the high priority list of concern. Uh, the... But yes, we are seeing a major trend. Uh, in terms of uh, jihadists uh, let, being... Let, uh, me, let me push forward on that with just a little bit here, just to fill in one more piece on this guy. He was picked up in Yemen along with about 11 other suspected al-Qaeda suspects. Uh, he got sick, went to a hospital, and literally shot his way out of the hospital, uh, killed a guard, and he has since been recaptured. Uh, I want to put on the screen here in a moment a, a number of faces and individuals. These are Americans with American passports who were born mm -hmm. here, who now have alleged ties to terrorists overseas. Now, some of it's been proven in the case of Hassan in the upper right-hand corner, uh, and others, the cases continue, like LaRose, the Jihad Jane on the bottom, uh, who was picked up in October. These people are the MVPs of this group of al-Qaeda. They have American passports. They're the kind of people the terrorist group wants because they can move throughout this country almost without suspicion. Absolutely, and they're not on the radar screens. They they referred to as clean skins, those without known criminal affiliation or terrorist affiliation. They can move in and out of the United States freely. Um, there's been a lot of concern for a number of years now of the Somali diaspora in the United States. Uh, about two dozen have been known to travel to fight side by side with Al Shabaab. Uh, Al Shabaab has recently uh, pledged allegiance to Al Qaeda and Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, in particular in Yemen. Um, there are a hundred known British suspect, uh, British passport carriers who've also gone to fight side by side with uh, Al Shabaab, as well as Swedes, Danes. Um, this is a growing concern, and, and clearly, if they're not on our radar screens, uh, if they're clean skins, they're going to have much greater access uh, traveling to and from the United States, and and the trust factor, the ability to reach out to others, the internet, I, I think, is the critical frontier. Um, Al-Qaeda and its affiliates have, have turned to the Internet to wage their war of ideas. Um, they're spreading messages. Um, and in addition to the technology, they've always used it for communications and fundraising and other tradecraft purposes. But the killer application of the Internet is people. It builds in this sense of affinity. It builds in a sense of identity. It's the ability to reach out to far-flung corners all over the world with shared uh, views. And that's something we got to get our arms around. Yeah, we got to yeah, push yeah, back on the narrow. That, to that last point about getting your arms around, how, how do you think we're doing? You know, we, we haven't really stepped up on the Internet. Uh, we're doing a good job domestically. We are arresting a, a number of these people, so the FBI deserves some credit. But we haven't pierced the narrative. We need a counter-narrative. We need to be able to expose and unpack the jihadist message and show how the nouns don't match up with the verbs. And uh, to do this, we're, we're going to need to delegitimize the message, deglobalize the message, and deglamorize the message. This isn't a theoretical set of debates. These aren't martyrs. These aren't heroes. They're murdering terrorist thugs. And, and we need to recognize that. We need the stories of the victims, not only the Western victims, but the majority of al-Qaeda's victims are Muslims. What are their stories? What are their faces? What are their names? Yeah. What are their dreams lost? You raised some great points. Uh, we'll bring you back, okay? Frank Salufo, my guest at Washington, D.C., on the next wave of terror. Thank you, Frank. All right there.